Hello AWS friends. In this uh, video we are going to have a look on Application Composer, a new service which was introduced at the reInvent and I saw uh, already quite some videos of people uh, showing a little bit the features and how amazing is this new service. The first thing to say, I'm a little bit surprised this is um, concerned so new because um, there's already a service which is kind of doing the same thing and it's existing really for a couple of years so if you go to CloudFormation there is a designer and it's kind of doing the same things for I don't know how many years now six seven years so where you can drop for example let's say um, Let's drop a lambda here and it will generate uh, the CloudFormation um, template and you can also choose between JSON and YAML. This is also very useful as a, uh, for convert JSON to YAML or vice versa. And also if you have already, for example, the CloudFormation, let me paste in here. Um, a cloud formation of a, um, VPC. As you can see, you can do also here the reverse engineering and it will create this architecture diagram of a VPC. So this service is already a um, long time available. So let's have a closer look on application composer. What's so new about this um, drag and drop to create CloudFormation templates. So, let's have a look at Application Composer. We can open this new service in here and let's open a demo. It's always good to start. And here we have an example of a serverless architecture of API Gateway <coughs> to edit some items. Lambda functions, five lambda functions for listing or updating, deleting them, and the Dynamo table for uh, as a database for these items. We can switch here to the template view and have a look to the CloudFormation file. And in the canvas, we can, for example, take a look on the details. And there you can see that's a note JS Lambda and you have here some informations about the attributes so far that looks quite nice. There is also IDE support for Application Composer. Here I'm using Visual Studio and what you have to do is first you have to um, install the AWS Toolkit extension and which is also um, required is you have to sync uh, your local folder which contains the template YAML um, with Application Composer and open in um, Visual Studio this folder otherwise you won't find it um, in the AWS if you take a look to the AWS toolkit so you see uh, for example Code Whisperer, Explorer, CDK, Code Catalyst but uh, you will only see the feature for Application Composer once you really open this folder. If you open the template YAML, you will see the CloudFormation view. And here you can um, switch to the designer where you should see actually your um, diagram. And here you see the API gateway. You can go here for details. You see the routes, all the methods, you can go for Lambda, you can see here some details um, that it's a Node.js Lambda, where's the source path, and also for the Dynamo table in here. So this is quite nice. Now I think it's time to create our first own project and maybe we can kind of try to create um, a similar project, maybe a serverless a API gateway with lambdas. We don't have to implement all methods, but just to get uh, uh, the basics working.
Before we do so, maybe one more test. So as you can see in general, we have here the application composer, the canvas or the template, and you can, that's the idea, drag and drop your components here to create your uh, CloudFormation code. So as you can see, there are 14 enhanced components, so it looks like kind of serverless stuff is supported uh, in a better way, and the standard uh, infrastructure's code resources. So what about um, we want to create, for example, a usual situation, the first thing you create for a customer, if he have run some services, EC2, Fargate, or Elastic Beanstake, or whatever a database, you create a VPC. So I'm going to search for a VPC, and here's the AWS EC2 VPC, so we drag and drop this here, and we have to take a look. So this is the VPC uh, template which was created, so uh, very basic stuff, so I think uh, we won't be able to uh, uh, go any further with this VPC. Let's have actually a look how um, a VPC should look like if we go for a real one. So this is a CloudFormation template of a real VPC with uh, three availability zones. Uh, I have a parameter to pass the class B, so the second value in the IP range to make this as a parameter. And I have some flow logs. I have um, subnets, three public, three private ones. As you can see, we have an internet gateway. We have nets. We have elastic IP address for the uh, net. We have root tables. We have root table uh, routes. Uh, um, um, we have private routes, the association for the, for these routes, and the ACL. And we have, of course, some outputs. So, if you go back to um, the composer and take a look at the template to create a real VPC with uh, this setup, for example, three public subnets, three private subnets, and, and internet gateways and that. You will have uh, quite some, some work here with the canvas, so I think uh, that's not a perfect use case. If you have to create a VPC, probably you have done this a couple of times, use your template you already created one day, and you're much faster on this. Let's try to create a new project from scratch. So, I will therefore use a new folder with an empty template file. And therefore we should have a empty canvas and we can start to drop some components like an API gateway and uh, lambdas. So let's go. We can do this also in Visual Studio Code. Code so we open our template YAML and we open the canvas and let's drop an API gateway first. Looking on the details so we can add our first message, which is getting all items. Then add another one. Maybe we want to get one item. And what about updating an item? So that should be fine for now. So by now we have created our API gateway. Now let's add a lambda for each of these methods. So this is my um, get all items. I will um, use Python. So uh, be sure you use here the same Python version um, or whatever version you're using and, and a platform which you also have installed on your um, on your local machine. So uh, the zip, the Python, and the handler, and we can call these 
get all items and save. Same thing for get item, read item, yeah, let's call it the same. Read item, Python 11, read item, save. And update item. Eleven, and now we can connect our API gateway that works like a charm to our lambdas. And what's finally missing is the database. So we're going to add um, a Dynamo table, calling it items with partition key ID, which is fine. And we're going to skip the sort key for now to keep it easy and say save and also connect our lambdas with our dynamo so far it looks quite nice let's have a closer look at what was created so far this is our project folder uh, here we have the template file so we have our API, it's a serverless stack, so not a CloudFormation, a serverless um, CloudFormation file. Uh, we have our lambdas and a Dynamo table. Also, what was created was a source folder, and this one was the uh, first, actually we can delete this before renaming it, and here we have Python for getting all. So there's no implementation. We have to do this. Uh, we have a Python for read one item and we have a Python for updating one item. Let's create a basic implementation for our um, Lambda so we can at least test um, the whole architecture once we have deployed it. Um, I think here Code Whisperer can help us, so it's already um, adding Boto3 and we can use um, the NMODB is Boto Resource DynamoDB. Perfect. We will need a method um, read all items from a Dynamo table. Quite nice. Def read all items table name. And here we go. Now the only thing we have to add read all items from our table items. We should also return this. Um, so of course we will need some um, adaptions here on the code. We will um, need uh, to handle the API calls um, and passing parameters but let's try to have maybe just a simple um, implementation to get it tested so by now the read item import bot 3 the oops dynamo db that's fine one item from a dynamo table here we go that's uh, what we don't need um, so this is actually items and the event, the key we have to get for the event. When we are using API Gateway, it's a little bit different. Uh, we have to actually read the pass parameter. But for now, we can keep this. And here we go. Now let's actually try to deploy. 
what we got so far. So we go for sync and it will be deployed via the SAM command line. So I select a region Frankfurt and let's call it um, application composer YouTube. Select a bucket. I can reuse my bucket. And by now we can have a look if this is working here on the terminal. We don't see anything yet. Let's see here. It's in progress, built successfully. By now the deployment is triggered. Let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. Resources. We have a dynamo table. We have a role. The our lambdas and our API gateway in a second. Quite nice. And by now we can check here, for example, in Dynamos, it should have created a table items, but as you can see, there's already an issue. So this table is not named items, but application composer YouTube and with this um, generated um, ID here, that's not so nice. Have a look on the lambdas. Yeah, we have your application composer get all items, update item and read item, and API gateway. We have API from Stack Application Composer YouTube. So um, we are going to have an issue with the Dynamo table because once we are calling our lambdas. And we have implemented to expect a table named items. It cannot be found. It will throw probably an error with the permissions or table not found. So we have to fix the items table here. As you can see, the logical ID is fine, but there's obviously missing a parameter for name. And this uh, looks like not it can be done here in the attributes. So I have to edit my CloudFormation and enter a table name which is items and therefore force the creation to be created with this name and now we can do again a sync and see if we have the correct dynamo table by now. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. I'll be back once it has been deployed. So the CloudFormation um, template is in update state and let's have a look on our dynamo table. We have a new table items, the old table is going to be deleted, so this is the table we want to see and looks quite fine. We can have a look here, explore items. Um, we don't have any items of course, so let's create our first item and I will give it the ID 1 and add maybe name create this item. By now we have um, at least one item and we can test our lambda method. So this is my method to get a list of all items and I have already configured a test event. We don't need any uh, event data by now. It's not taking any parameters. So let's 
um, call it. So we receive our item as response. Um, the communication with the dynamo table works quite fine. The role was deployed to, uh, we can access the um, dynamo table. So this is quite nice. Permission, as we can see, we have here a role. And we should see that it is allowed to access, to access our dynamo table. And here, that's the important thing. We need really the table name be correct. So with this table name generated from our uh, canvas in the application, application composer we would run into trouble here. Now we can uh, check out if our API is also working as expected so let's have a look on our items method. We go for test, we don't need a query string and press test here. We're getting an internal server error because you know, as you can see here the lambda was um, uh, actually called correctly, but uh, it's a malformed lambda proxy response. We have to change a little bit our response for API gateway, but that's uh, a little thing. So actually it already um, was able to communicate with the lambda. We need to change the response uh, for the API gateway, so it should actually return a 200. And our response for the uh, read all items method must be um, put in this JSON dumps method. Let's test it. And the response should look like this. And by now we can test again from API gateway. And by now we have status code 200 and we have a response body which looks like what we expected. So nice, we were able to uh, deploy these, uh, this serverless um, application or a little architecture quite fast. So we have an API gateway which is working, we have lambdas, of course we have to implement the lambdas our own, that's not what application composer is going to do. But with Code Whisperer you can be, uh, be really fast on this. And we have a, a dynamo table to store our items. As we have seen, we have an issue here in the um, in the composer with the table name. The logical ID is, is not what helps us really to name the table. We need to adapt the CloudFormation um, template itself. So a little bit of um, issue still, but um, works quite nice for these serverless stuff. We have also seen creating a resource like a VPC with all of its sub-components. It's not quite easy here in, in uh, the composer. It's a lot of work. I think it uh, would be great that there would be um, added some components um, which you have, for example, in CDK. You have in CDK uh, level 1, level 2, level 3 components. So basically the, uh, the resources as simple resources but also some advanced um, uh, resources which are already composed by a couple of uh, resources. For example, if you deploy a Fargate service, you can use one of these construct and it will uh, create a t a task definitions, a service, uh, load balancing. And there should be, I think, a resource enhanced uh, or a compo uh, component uh, that uh, creates, for example, a VPC already out of the box and you're not required to add all of these um, uh, subnets and net gateways and internet gates to this VPC. So there's still some space to improve this tool, but so far it looks quite nice. And um, check it out your own. Have fun and see you on the next video. Bye.